Julian Assange, founder of the website WikiLeaks, is responsible for giving secret information to the world on several governments, primarily on the United States, whom celebrates one year at the Ecuadorian Embassy in London this June 19, 2013. I thank President Correa for the courage he has shown in considering and in granting me political asylum. And I also thank the government and in particular Foreign Minister Ricardo Patino, who upheld the Ecuadorian Constitution and its notion of universal citizenship in their consideration of my asylum. Julian has always been a nomad and has lived in different countries while his cyber activism has caused shockwaves around the globe. He is considered one of the most influential people in the world. Ever since his youth in Australia, this controversial character has given regionally continuous news reaching global connotations in 2010 by uploading a video called Collateral Murder, which is network information that was supplied by the soldier Bradley Manning that reveals atrocities carried out by the U.S. Army when it invaded territories in Iraq and Afghanistan. One of the sequences that went around the planet is where American soldiers killed in cold blood a group of people who were gathered together, whom were journalists and photographers from the news agency Reuters. In this same event, they also killed the people who tried to help the wounded without caring that there were children inside the vehicle. Why do it? Well, there's, there's two reasons. One, because it's fun to kill people. If you've been in that environment, removed from all the effects of killing people for a long time. It's a video game when we get a high score. The other is, they brag after a kill streak about how many people they kill. They go back to base and go, hey, killed 13 today. This video angered the world's darkest powers, compromising Manning to a life sentence. He is a hero and an example to all of us. And one of the world's foremost political prisoners. Bradley Manning must be released. In 2010, as it was his habit of being a nomad, when he was in London parallel to these events, the Swedish authorities ordered the arrest of Assange for an alleged sexual assault while he was giving a lecture in this country, which is being taken as a political maneuver to bring Assange to Sweden where he could be extradited to the United States, to the same fate as his informant, Soldier Manning. While Assange's legal battle occurred in England between charges, one of the hundreds of thousands of emails revealed by WikiLeaks mentions Ecuador, where Heather Lange, former U.S. ambassador in Quito, accuses President Correa of having named a corrupt officer as police commander, which was denied because this was false. And the Ecuadorian government, through the foreign ministry, decided to expel the U.S. ambassador and declared this person non grata. In London, Shortly after several legal adventures that led to Assange being in jail for nine days and already under house arrest, the activist begins with the Russian radio Russia Today, a program called The World of Tomorrow, where one of his first interviews was the president of Ecuador, Rafael Correa, on April 17, 2012. In the interview, which was the only time there was any official contact between the two personalities, they spoke of the media struggle and the new leadership in Latin America. Thank you, President Correa. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Don't get assassinated. Thank you. 
That's something we have to avoid every day. <laughs> this phrase, beyond getting a smile out of the Ecuadorian president, traveled the world as a warning about the issues that were being handled through WikiLeaks and its founder, Julian Assange. Shortly after May 30th, a judge decides to extradite Assange to Sweden, and that's when he decides to seek political asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy in London on June 19th. On August 16th, 2012, Foreign Chancellor Ricardo Patiño officially announced the granting of political asylum to Julian Assange. El gobierno del Ecuador, fiel a su tradición de proteger a quienes buscan amparo en su territorio o en los locales de sus misiones diplomáticas, ha decidido conceder asilo diplomático. Al ciudadano Julian Assange. As of this event, Ecuador does not seek to interfere with the Swedish judicial system, but has sought out guarantees so that there is not an ulterior extradition after responding to the Swedish judicial system. This possibility is faculted by the Swedish and United Kingdom's governments. Sadly, neither of the countries have accepted this agreement with which Ecuador has the legal obligation guaranteed by international rights and the Ecuadorian constitution not to surrender any person in these conditions. Hemos planteado la conformación de una comisión de juristas de ambas cancillerías para la búsqueda de puntos de acercamiento entre ambos países, porque creemos que es absolutamente necesario para que prevalezca la justicia en un caso de conflicto legal, que se encuentre una solución a la necesidad de que los derechos fundamentales del señor Assange sean respetados. Hay una clara diferencia entre ley y justicia, que pueden estar, por supuesto, y deben estar, generalmente están asociadas, pero en este caso hay un conflicto legal y habiendo un conflicto legal debemos de recurrir a las instancias legalmente superiores y en lo final y en lo definitivo debemos de tratar de que se imponga la justicia en este caso. Ecuador defends the right to give just treatment to Mr. Assange, and this is how it should be remembered in history. In the Ecuadorian embassy in London, real freedom of speech is at stake, the same liberty that does not have frontiers, and neither does our struggle. There is unity in the oppression. There must be absolute unity and determination in the response. Thank you. The Ecuadorian Ministry of Foreign Affairs share this video.